In this video, we'll be talking about the concepts behind why we would want to do an equivalent circuit like a Tevin or Norton. I want you to consider just a circuit that we're dealing with and have probably seen something very similar in the past. And what it's going to be is a uh, voltage source and then say a 1 ohm and two 2 ohm resistors. Now, historically, what we've been asking you to do is say solve for the current in one of the resistors or the voltage across it. Let's give an actual voltage here and say it's 10 volts. In engineering, what we very frequently do is want to reuse a component that we've already designed. So let us pretend as though this circuit actually has two terminals. And across this, I can connect a load, RL. So the circuit here is a constant circuit. It's something that I'm, I don't know, I buy it at the store, for example, or I've designed it for a different purpose. The load here is something I'm going to want to connect my circuit to. If I wanted to do an analysis, for example, I might ask, how much power am I supplying in the power supply? It would depend on the unknown load voltage. What I could do is work it out so that I compute for a particular load what the power is, or I could do it in general. I'm going to show you what that looks like here. And then we'll talk about how we might simplify this if we had to do the computation over and over again. So let's go ahead and say that we would like to know how much power is being drawn from the, power, the voltage source. Well, the first thing I might do is notice that, well, my power is V squared over R. And if my power is V squared over R, that would be the equivalent resistance of the entire circuit. My equivalent resistance, because I don't know my load voltage, or I beg your pardon, my load resistance, is 2 plus 2RL two over RL plus 2. This simplifies, in a sense, to 4RL plus 1 over RL plus 2. Therefore, my power used up in this circuit would be V squared, which is 10 volts squared, or 100, multiplied by RL plus 2 over 4 RL plus 1. Now, imagine that this circuit were any more complicated than this. I would have to go through this process over and over again. It would be a very complicated equation. This one's already getting to a point where it's a little bit difficult to deal with, and my chances of making an algebraic mistake are quite high. What I'd like to do, ideally, is replace a complicated circuit with a simple one. That's the benefit of using a Tevenin circuit. In the next videos, we'll develop the techniques we need to create the Tevenin circuit, talk about the Norton circuit, which is an equivalent circuit that we can be derived from the Tevenin circuit, and give a couple of shortcuts and their pitfalls.